Welcome to the Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Fit, the all-in-one AI-powered corporate wellness platform developed by Vantage Circle. Why then, this is none to you, for there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. William Shakespeare. Yes, we all know, taking small steps can make a big difference in our life. But it all starts with the mindset. So, hello and welcome back to Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host Parishmita and we have with us Cyril Kotlevin, an international speaker and author. You can also say a person who is making change simpler. So, we'll be discussing the topic Embracing Change Mindset. Actually, I was very much intrigued after listening to his TEDx talk and obviously looking forward to have this conversation so hi Cyril, how are you? Very good. Uh, looking forward for uh, the session. So we are very much looking forward for this conversation. Nice. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully we can uh, inspire the people who are listening. What is the significance of a change mindset in today's corporate setting? Yeah, what you're noticing is certainly since a few years, since almost a whole world, we've had the pandemic. I have a feeling that there is more and more change happening. So one big change or one big trend is, of course, what we've seen is the whole digital trend. People have to work uh, from home. We work with Zoom teams. And it's a little bit harder for people also to connect with each other. So that's a big trend uh, that I'm seeing. And I also have a feeling that some companies... Maybe because people are working from home or the distance is a little bit harder, that it's also harder to make sure that the people are happy and that people are engaged. And I think that the change mindset, what I call the change mindset, might really help to bring people together for people to uh, to cope with change. Because I think certainly in the corporate world, yeah, a lot of changes are happening every day, new technologies, uh, the customers want new things, we're working in an international environment, the whole pandemic, that all those things make it harder for people to, yeah, cope with the change. And, and what I'm feeling is that there is quite a lot of resistance. If people talk about a new change project, that there is immediately some resistance to, oh no, we have to change again. And I think if we have the right mindset for it, that will help to make those things uh, a little bit easier. Yeah, in our, in our life also, we used to say, right, change is something permanent, but which is a really hard thing, right? It's very hard to accept. So I know a change mindset sounds revolutionary or out of the box. So how do people, mostly leaders, perceive it? Uh, does generation gap has anything to play role in this picture? Or Yeah, what, what I'm seeing is it's indeed it's a different way of thinking what i've seen in the past is if we want to do a change project a lot of times we change the organization or we give training to people and what i've also seen what really helps i think we have to start from the mindset of people because if we can help people to be a bit more open for change, to be a bit more flexible uh, toward change, have a little bit less resistance, that it becomes easier. And of course, we still have to structure our organization in uh, in a different way, but it doesn't have to be that uh, drastically. So I think it's indeed something different. It's a different point of view. It's, it's, it's a little bit out of the box because a lot of times... For a lot of organizations, it's easier to change the organization instead of spending time with the people and helping people to open up a little bit more. So what I've tried to do is make it also quite simple. So I sometimes call myself a simplifier. I'm not sure if that's an English word that exists, but everybody gets it. But I believe that sometimes some simple concepts or some simple guidelines can already help us to solve 80% of a problem. And we still need experts, you know, for the last part. So it doesn't have to be, yeah, you call it revolutionary, but I think it's, and it is different. It's a different way of looking, 
but it doesn't has to cost a lot of money or you have to invest a lot of time. I think if you can take some very small steps, that will already help. And then your second question is for a difference now with the generation gap. I'm not sure if if it is a difference in generations. What I'm noticing is that some industries accept a little bit easier than, than other industries to focus a bit more on the mindset. So what I'm noticing is that certainly the very big organizations, they have a bit more trouble with it because their whole organization is structured. And if you start to work on the mindset, so for example, if you say to people uh, that they can take more initiative on themselves, that they don't have to get seven signatures, I'm noticing that, that the bigger companies, they have a bit more trouble with it. So I'm not sure if it's a generation thing. I would rather say the larger the organization, they have so many structures and procedures and ways of working. And that maybe in those environments, it's a little bit harder to, to convince the leadership to trust their people a little bit more because The change mindset for me, also you give a little bit more responsibility to the people. You let them decide uh, how they want to realize something. So what we want to realize, the, the results, they are still there, the objectives, but the way how they can get there, I think that's where the change mindset uh, comes into play. So yeah, it's a good question. I've I've already worked with very young people but some of them were already stuck. You know, they were already thinking in patterns and they had a little bit more dif- difficulties with it. And I've also worked with people who were almost going on, on their pension. You know, they were going to, to get retired and they were still very open to it. So I'm not sure if, if age and generation, probably a little bit. You know, the older generations are maybe a little bit more used to structures and procedures while the new people who are coming in they lie in open environment so maybe it's a little bit but it, it is an individual thing too yeah yeah it's, it's it's a little tricky because like when we are talking about change are we talking about an agile mindset also yes i would think for me the the change mindset it would hmm. maybe be almost the same as uh, as an agile mindset it comes a little bit that's maybe nice to mention Maybe you've heard of the book. It was quite, uh, the book got quite some attention all over the world. It was called uh, The Growth Mindset from written by Carol Dweck. She was a, a professor. And what she discovered was that some people, and it's not that, that one person is just one mindset. So uh, she made the difference between the growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And it depends a little bit on certain areas so some people can have really a growth mindset in in creativity and maybe at home but if it comes to maybe marketing skills they are very fixed and i think the change mindset would be in between so it would be going from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset you need what i would call a change mindset you need to be an, a bit more agile you need, need to be a bit more open you need to be willing to learn a little bit more Yes. As we can also see the culture of growth is you know, increasing uh, more in this organization or the private sectors. So how can a change mindset redefine uh, work culture or company culture or improve the lives of people working in there? Yeah, it is indeed. I think it's both. You will improve the, the, the culture in the organization. So the way how we work together, are people engage. So I think that's one aspect. And then you have more the individual aspect where you really, I'm absolutely sure if people apply the change mindset or an agile mindset a bit more, it will help them yeah, to cope with all the changes that are happening a little bit more easy because we live in a, yeah, in a very busy world. A lot of things are changing every day and, and it's tiring because we human beings We love to change a little bit, but not too much. You know, you saw it with the whole pandemic. Everybody had to work in a different way. And it was quite challenging for a lot of people. Certainly people who didn't, who weren't used to work with a bit more digital tools. It was quite hard for them. And they felt 
that they were a little bit on the outside. But if we can approach all those changes a little bit more uh, at ease, I'm absolutely sure that will help indeed the culture of an organization to make it easier to come up with new innovations uh, and, and to survive in a very competitive yeah, world that we're living in. And at the other side, I think people will be more happy. They, they will feel better because they don't feel that much stress if something is happening. They can, yeah, they can be a bit more open to it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, like, I want to ask this question, like, do you think we are more rigid towards change? Yeah, I think some people indeed are. And certainly the people in, in larger organizations, they they are a bit more rigid. They are a bit more, ooh, you know, change is happening and, and they don't like it. And I think it is especially for those people because other people, they some people love it. You know, that's also it differs from person to person. They can cope with change very easily. They even look for it. You know, they, they come up with new ideas all the time. But they have a feeling that I would say around 80% of the people, they are, um, yeah, it, it has something also to do with a little bit uh, of fear because fear of the unknown, what will happen. So we are not sure what will happen. Uh, fear that they do something wrong. But that's part, I think, also of, of innovation and, and the changes that are happening. Sometimes we need to have a little bit of guts and try out something. And sometimes it works, sometimes not. But are you also resilient to, to get up again, try it again, approach it from a different angle? Yeah. So it also helps to get rid of a little bit rigidness, I would say. Yeah. Which is actually good, right? Mm. Yeah. I think it's very good. I think we live in a world where we need everybody, you know, certainly in, in the, the corporate world. How can we make sure that all our employees and all our people are, are open for change? Because the future depends on it, you know, where I would say 10 years or 20 years ago, if you had a good product, that was fine. But but the competition at this moment is, is so hard in every industry that we need people who think open, who are a bit more agile, who can be a bit more flexible. Yes, certainly. So, Cyril, how can one boost their creative and entrepreneurial mindset and stimulate the mindset of people you work with to unleash their full potential or true potential, I would say? Yeah, yes. And we've all, already been talking about the change mindset, but what, what do I mean by the change mindset? And this question is, is, is very relevant. For me, um, what I sometimes do is I start my story with explaining people that we human beings, we love patterns. If we can do things that we already know that feel safe. And, and it is also interesting because we become more efficient and efficient. For example, brushing your teeth, probably you always use the same uh, hand to do it. And you can give it a try, use your other hand. In the beginning, it will, will be quite hard and difficult but that's what innovation is. We're, we're looking for new things. And maybe if one of your arm is broken, at that moment, you need your other arm. So at those moments, we need to be more innovative. And the same is true in, in business life, but also in, in life in general, uh, that we love patterns. And that's very good. I would say 95% of the time, trust those patterns uh, because they're there, there for a reason. But in some cases, and I go back, I used the, the example of the pandemic because almost everybody in the world has, has suffered from it. But that was for me also a good example. At that moment, a lot of the habits that we had, we couldn't do them anymore, you know, because we couldn't go to the office, we couldn't shake hands. It was very hard to meet clients. So at those moments, when there is a crisis or we want to change something. The logical way is not working anymore. And those moments, we need to think in a different way. And that's what I call the change mindset. And for me, there are three pillars, three very simple things that you can do to train a change mindset or agile mindset or resilient mindset, how you want to call it. And one of them, the three pillars are very simple. Yes and act yes and act what's the yes the yes stands for me suspend your judgment because we human beings we have a tendency to judge quite quickly for example i say the word rain 
And I'm quite sure everybody who is listening, within a fraction of a second, you have an opinion about it. Positive or negative, ah, oh, it should rain a little bit more, or I hope it's not raining when I go home because it gets wet. And immediately we, we have thoughts about it. And we do exactly the same for a new idea. So if somebody is coming with, with a new idea, like, hey, we are going to do this podcast with three guests at the same time. Probably, you know, a first reaction that you have is, yes, but how are we going to organize this? Yes, but can we do it? There's a lot more work to find three guests in set. I'm just using this as an example. But immediately we have, we have an opinion about it. And I call those, um, yeah, those yes, buts. I call those idea killers, all kinds of expressions like, yes, but we don't have money. We don't have time. We've already tried it. It doesn't work in India. It doesn't work in the US like this. And immediately we, we block the idea. If we can go from a yes, but to a yes and. So this is a very simple exercise and you can practice it. Also, if you are with, with a colleague, I would advise you one minute, uh, you organize a party, but you have to say yes, but the whole time. So let's have an online party. Yes, but that's boring. Okay, maybe we do it in the office. Yes, but it's very cold outside. And probably nothing will happen. If you can switch to yes and, and I do this for one, one minute or three minutes, sometimes I call it the three minute rule, that in a meeting, maybe you have 10 agenda points. I would say nine of them use logical thinking, do what you normally do. But maybe there is one agenda point where you could use some creativity. Then at that moment, what I would recommend is go for three minutes in the yes and mode. So for three minutes, let's take a, a specific example. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's take recruitment. At this moment, everybody is looking for new people. Uh, and I can imagine that the logical way, using LinkedIn and, and going to a job fair, everybody is doing it. So it's very hard to find good people. So if we do this exercise for three minutes, you could say, okay, for three minutes, you can say whatever you want. So then people would say, ah, maybe you have to pay or people that we hire double the fee that we, or double the salary that they normally have. And maybe somebody is saying, no, we don't have the money. Yes, and what would be possible? Okay, maybe we can invite all our friends, you know, to come one day to the work so they can experience it. Yes, and maybe we go to schools already to primary school and we, we work with the students and the children to, to maybe those people want to work with us uh, in the future in 10 years. And what you do is during three minutes, you can say whatever you want. You have all the money, you have all the time, you can do what you want. But after the three minutes, you look at all the ideas that you gathered and you pick the ones that are relevant. So let's take the idea of uh, every employee, they can bring all their friends uh, to the work to, to experience it. I can imagine bringing a lot of people that will be a little bit hard. Hey, but wait a minute, what would happen if Every employee, you know, they can bring one person on a certain day. It's a kind of an open day. We can organize it. That, that would be doable. You know, that would be feasible. Doesn't cost that much money. And it could be a very interesting idea because your friends immediately will see where you're working. So sometimes we have to suspend our judgment to, to see more possibilities. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. By the way, maybe that's that's interesting. If people go to uh, the website ideakillers.net, ideakillers.net, you can download a poster. You can download a poster with the yes uh, but and the yes and uh, on it. It's already in different languages, so maybe that helps uh, already a little bit. So that's for me the the yes, suspend judgment. A second one is the and, A-N-D, and that stands for sometimes we have to look at the world from a different angle because we again we have a tendency if you are working in marketing or uh, in human resources you look at the world from from that point of view again this is very good because it's also your expertise but if 
the logical way is not working anymore, maybe we have to look at the same challenge or the same problem with a different hat. So let, let's take the example of the recruitment again. You know, we can imagine that the, the human resources person is looking at it. Ah, oh, we're going to put in an advertisement. But let's let's put on a different hat. How would somebody from logistics solve a problem? How would somebody from marketing solve a problem or from the financial department? Ah, maybe somebody from the financial department um, would say we give 10% bonus in the first three months, you know, I'm just making it a little bit up, but you can also go a level further. We can take a different department, but how would a different uh, industry, you know, maybe you're working in, in a bank. How would somebody from a pharmaceutical company, what would they do to recruit new people or an organization working in entertainment? Ah, they would do this and this and this. And then you can also go to different cultures. So uh, let's say you are a recruiter in Belgium. Hey, how would somebody in India, what would they do to find new people? Somebody from Mexico, somebody from New Zealand. And what happens if you suspend your judgment again at the same time, you're putting on different hats and you will you will get more possibilities to, to choose from. So that's the second thing, the end. And the last one is the act, which is also a very simple one. We can talk about ideas, but we have to do something. We have to do some experiments. We have to try out things. And one element that that might help also the the listeners is what they call a nano action. And what is a nano action? You have a limited amount of money and you have a limited amount of time. Why those two? Those two are a lot of times the biggest idea killers. We don't have time. We don't have money. Okay. Finding, you know, 10 euros or $10 or, you know, a small amount of rupees, that should be possible. And one hour of time, I know it's very busy, but I'm quite sure you can find one hour of time. So the next time when you're having a good idea, instead of sitting behind your desk and trying to create the perfect plan in theory, I would advise you take a nano step, take a nano action. You have one hour, a small amount of money. Pick up the phone, you know, call a colleague, uh, try it out on a very small scale and see if it works or not. You know, let's take the example of we're going to invite uh, friends to the office, you know, to give them an experience if it works or not. If you have to organize a whole day, that already costs some time and money. You know what it can do? I have a good friend. He lives quite close to my, my office. I'm going to invite that friend for... You know, just a quick visit, half an hour, I'll show him around. You don't have to ask permission for that. It doesn't cost a lot of time, doesn't cost a lot of money. And immediately you're experimenting if if the ID works or not. Maybe your friend is saying, hey, wow, this is a cool company. Can I come back or can I have a chat with somebody else? Or And maybe that person is saying, ah, I don't know. Okay, then at least you've learned something. So if you take a nano step, it could be a success or sometimes yeah, it doesn't work, but probably you've learned more than the person who's still sitting behind the desk. So that's my yeah, change mindset uh, story. Yes and act, three simple words, but that will make change uh, a little bit easier. So I was um, going through your TEDx talk, right? You did this change on change mindset. So there was this thing, no perspective about this yes and no thing that was very much intriguing to me. So yeah, it reminded me of that thing, yes. Yeah, how do you look at the world indeed? And and we can look we can look at the world from different perspectives. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you can practice it. It takes a little bit of time, but I think all those things are skills. And you can learn it. If you are a little bit motivated, you can learn to look from different angles at the world. Yeah. What are the behavioral and mental health implications of a change mindset, especially in the 21st century? Yeah, what I see is that one thing is that people feel more confident. So if they have those skills to cope with change a little bit easier, they feel more confident to, to do things. They feel more engaged because sometimes if if they are stuck, they they can find new solutions or they can look at it from a different angle and maybe 
find a solution. So what I sometimes see is if there is a challenge or a problem in an organization, some people are really stuck. You know, those are a little bit more the, the rigid people who, who think from one point of view. And they they don't know how to behave. They feel uncertain. They feel a little bit unsafe. And they're not going to take any initiative. But of course, that's not so good because, you know, also as an organization, you want to grow and you want that the team gets stronger. But if you have people who, who have resistance to everything, that's not so good. So I think if you have more some elements of the change mindset if there is again a challenge maybe you can look at it from a different point of view and maybe you find a solution or you can go into the yes and so instead of looking at the negative elements what would be possible what i've noticed people who do this they also get noticed by the leaders by team colleagues and that also helps them to, to feel appreciated. They feel more engaged. So I'm absolutely sure it has something also to do a positive effect on, on the well being of people. Um, so I can definitely recommend everybody you know, try it out, practice it. Um, and we need it. People also feel a bit more healthy. They, they, yeah, they, they don't feel that they don't belong. They, they feel they belong because they can come up with solutions and alternatives to uh, to make a stu- take a few steps forward. Yeah. Yeah. So it boosts their morale and motivation to work better, right? Yeah. As well, I think for the individual, but also for the team and the organization. So it's uh, for both interesting. Yes. Uh, so Cyril, coming to the end of the session, and I would like to ask you the last question, which is also very much important part of the session. Yeah. So would you suggest some tips and tools to help HR leaders drive behavioral change across their organization and reduce the resistance to change? Yeah, so a few tips. They already came back in, in when I was explaining the change mindset. What I would apply is what I call the three-minute rule. So maybe as an HR leader or a leader in general, a very good tip that works is in your next meeting, Maybe you have 10 agenda points. I would say nine of them, you make decisions like you normally do. But maybe there is one agenda point where you could use some creativity. And at that moment, maybe you can introduce the idea killers. And maybe you can download that poster, put it in the middle of the table. And then invite all the people who are there to go for three minutes into the yes end to, to practice it and, and see what happens. Now, I'm working already 20 years in this domain, and I've never met somebody who says, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. It feels safe. And you will notice that a, there will be a very positive atmosphere. So that's that's one tip that I definitely would, would recommend. A second one, and that's maybe you as an HR leader, sometimes you're also stuck. You know, because you're also a human being and, and you have to solve a lot of challenges. So what can you do to put on a different hat? Can you look at the world from uh, from a different angle? And maybe what might be interesting, what I've done, and people can look it up on, on Google, probably I'm quite sure you will find it. If they look for crossing HR borders, crossing HR borders, I collected a lot of examples what HR can do to learn from different departments, different industries, different resources. So what can they learn from a soccer team? What can they learn from a submarine? What can they learn? And I came up with a lot of examples and that might help them. So that's a very specific one for the HR uh, leaders. And maybe the last step is, yeah, challenge your people to take more nano actions. Can you have a small budget? It doesn't have to be very big, but can you give people some freedom to try out yeah, a few nano actions if they have an idea? You know, very small, very small scale and let them share, you know, also with the other people. Did it work? Okay, brilliant. If it's not working, also share it because a lot of times we can learn more from things that go wrong then only the success stories, because with a success story, everybody is applauding and that's it. But if something doesn't go the way that was expected, you can talk about it. Hey, maybe we should do this or that. And that will, yeah, that will help to 
take away some resistance and that will also help to yeah that that your employees and workforce is more engaged is more agile and you would be ready uh, for the future so maybe to end one of the quotes that they that they really like and they use it quite a lot is don't mind the change change your mind yeah. what do i mean by that so don't mind the change if a change is happening most of the time all the time energy money is going to the change itself but we can also focus on the mindset you know mind don't don't mind the change change your mind how can we make it easier for people so again i think certainly hr professionals can we spend a bit more time on the mindset because then you have a stronger workforce and then it doesn't matter what change is happening people will be a bit more open and agile to it so i hope that these tips uh, help a bit that people can really uh, use them and yeah feel free if you still have questions uh, look up my name we can connect on linkedin and uh, yeah would be glad to to help thank you so much sil it was such an interesting uh, you know session nice i enjoyed it <laughs> very very nice questions and uh, Yeah, I hope that it also what they try to do is to make it a bit more practical for people because sometimes we we stay a little bit to the theories. Yeah. But if we can really apply it that uh, that also helps. Yes, because people are so much loaded with tension and stress and we need such kind of conversation so that it can light up people, right? Yes. Absolutely. So I think this session was really interesting. Perfect. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming to our show. It was such nice talking to you. Very good and I wish you all the best also with the future podcast. Ciao ciao. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.